Are credit unions safer than banks? And what would happen if your credit union collapsed tomorrow? That's the question we're gonna answer in this video. So I wanna deep dive into how credit unions handle your money to see if they could get in the same type of trouble that these American banks are getting into and what the insurance covers in a credit union collapse compared to a regular bank and what exactly is the process when a credit union collapses? How quickly can you get access to your funds? We'll cover all those details and more and if you stay to the end, I'm gonna show you a list of credit unions that have been shut down and or liquidated recently, some as recently as March of 2023. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's start with what do credit unions do with the money that you deposit in there? So credit unions are just like banks in that they're in the fractional reserve banking system, meaning they don't need to keep your money in a vault for whenever you need it. They can actually take that money and go invest it elsewhere. They only need to keep a fraction of that money in reserves. And as of March 2020, just like banks, they actually don't need to keep any money in reserves, well, which is slightly worrisome, but that's just the banking system we live in and credit unions follow that same rule. So here are a couple of things they do with those funds. One, they send them out in loans, right? So you've probably considered getting an auto loan and credit unions usually have pretty good rates or, or mortgages, right? So that's a big other one is real estate investments or real estate properties. They will give out mortgages as well. They can also take a portion of those deposited funds and invest them. And they'll invest them similar to banks in things like U.S. treasuries that have differing maturity dates. Now, this is what got Silicon Valley Bank in trouble and some other banks is that they locked up their money for far too long and then the investments went down in value and people said, I want my money. And they had to sell these investments at a loss before they matured. And so unfortunately, credit unions, <laughs> they can do the same thing. They can put money in those investments. And I'll, and I'll show you an actual example of the balance sheet of the credit unions. But unlike banks, credit unions aren't profit driven. They're not publicly traded companies that are trying to answer to their shareholders. They are not for profit member owned, meaning you get the benefit of any excess profits that come from their investments or their loans. So when they give out loans, they usually have a reasonable interest rate because that interest rate just goes to pay the expenses. And when they invest that money, they do it conservatively because again, that money doesn't go back into someone's pocket or a shareholder's pocket. It goes back to you, the member. And ultimately that helps them offer lower interest rates and more services without any of those ridiculous banking fees. So credit unions are fundamentally different than banks in that way. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the balance sheet details of credit unions nationally. So this is on the NCUA website and they show you the balance sheet of all credit unions collectively. So as I mentioned, there's over $2 trillion in assets uh, at the end of 2022 is when this balance sheet came out. Um, check this out. This is fractional reserve banking at play here. There's only $130 billion of cash on hand out of that $2.2 billion dollars. So if we just do a little quick back of the calculator math here, 130 billion dollars divided by 2.17 trillion. Look at, there's about 6% of your money is actually cash in the bank and the rest of it is used elsewhere. So they have less than 10% of the cash that is deposited actually on hand. That's uh that's fascinating, but that's just the fractional reserve banking system we live in. Now, where does that money go? Well, it looks like 435 billion or about 20% of the money is actually going to investments. Now, this is what got Silicon Valley Bank in trouble. They put a massive amount of money in investments. I think it was over 50% and they've locked them into 10 year and longer securities uh, that had a low interest rate, lost value, and then people wanted their money and they, they had to sell all that stuff at a loss. What's cool about NCUA is they break this out and they tell you, hey, here are the different investments and their maturity dates. So the shorter term ones, it looks like about 89 billion are less than a year. The little bit longer term one to three year is about 115 billion, so a little more. Um, and then this is what worries me a little bit, the three to five year and the five to 10 year, almost $200 billion of those investments or over $200 billion are locked in for anywhere from three to 10 years. Now, again, if they hold those to maturity, they get the returns and there's no problem there, but if there is a run on the bank, that could be a problem. And these longer term ones that caused Silicon Valley Bank to go belly up, uh, they've only got 21 billion uh, out of that total 400 billion. So it's not quite as much, but 20% of your money is going to investments. Well, if only 6% is on hand, where's the rest of it? 
loans. So if you go down just a little bit further here, you can see a majority of it is going to mortgages and auto loans. So almost $700 billion going into mortgages and then auto loans uh, is almost $500 billion, which is Again, slightly concerning. So if you want to check out a really good video, I'll put a link in the description below. But my boy Marco from Whiteboard Finance did a great breakdown of sort of how the auto loan and auto industry bubble is about to pop. And there was way too many overfinanced vehicles that are losing value. And then people are going to be delinquent on those. It could cause a cascading effect and cause auto loans to default. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the delinquency rate here, you go down to auto loans, it's a quarter point up. So it is starting to go higher. Hopefully that doesn't get worse and worse, uh, especially at credit unions where they have more reasonable rates in terms and are a little more flexible. But uh, looks like there's about, again, 25% of those deposits are in auto loans. So that's where your money goes when you put it into a credit union. It looks like 20% of it goes to investments, uh, about 70% of it goes to loans and then only 6% just hangs out on hand uh, in the form of cash. Okay, so now that you know how the credit union is using your money, are your deposits insured? What if something happens? Can you get your money back? So yes, credit union deposits are insured almost exactly the same way as bank deposits. But instead of using the FDIC, they're using something called the NCUA or the National Credit Union Association. There is an insurance fund set up that protects you up to $250,000 per depositor per different type of account. So joint accounts would be $500,000 of deposit insurance. So the insurance fund is called the National Credit Union Share Insurance Fund, and credit unions essentially pay for that insurance to protect depositors in their bank. And again, similar to the FDIC, if a credit union does go under, the NCUA takes over and will reimburse depositors typically within five business days or less. Now, what if you have over $250,000 deposited into a single account at a credit union? Well, technically those funds are uninsured. And if the credit union collapses, you actually risk losing those funds. So to protect yourself further, if you need more than $250,000 in cash deposited at a credit union, you should open multiple accounts or at least have a joint account or maybe even consider multiple different credit unions to spread your cash across to make sure they are under the insured maximum amount. So your money is insured, but what exactly happens if a credit union collapses? How do you get access to your money? Well, I'm going to share the NCUA website again here, um, and this talks about what exactly happens if it's placed into liquidation, meaning they're going to come in and liquidate the assets and move your funds over and reimburse depositors and all of those things. So number one, they want to reiterate here again, you have $250,000 of insurance, so your money is safe. And access to your money is going to be through NCUA's Asset Management and Assistance Center, AMAC. They will send you a letter. So this is where you need to pay attention. If you want to get access to your money quickly, they will send you a letter with specific information regarding your credit union's closure. And you need to follow the instructions in that letter to receive and expedite the return of all your insured funds from that credit union. So it's not automatic. There's not like a digital transfer that just immediately happens. You actually are going to get a letter from uh, this AMAC place from the NCUA and you got to follow the instructions there to get your money quickly. Now I want to scroll down here because it actually, this is a very interesting piece of information. It says to minimize disruption in your banking services, finding another federally insured credit union will help you deposit your funds as quickly as possible. Now I don't know if that just means they want you to stay within the credit union network because they're really proud of credit unions or if you actually get your money faster. Now, it does say that um, you're typically paid within five days of a credit union's closure. That's the goal. But again, that's up to you. If you need to read this letter and follow those instructions to get it as fast as possible, I recommend just opening another account at another credit union. So hopefully they can just transfer those funds as quickly as possible. Now, again, if your credit union closes just like a bank account, you're going to need to stop using the debit card, stop using that checking account, stop your direct deposits, automatic withdrawals. Similar to if you closed a credit card and you had, you know, a bunch of stuff connected to it, just remove that from Amazon and all your other accounts. You're going to have to do all of those things anyway. So that is very annoying, 
but it is nice to know that your funds are protected and they will get them to you uh, fairly quickly. And this is an important note. If you do have loans, a mortgage, auto insurance, you do need to continue to make payments on those to avoid delinquency. Um, so it looks like you can actually send your payments directly to this uh, NCUA AMAC uh, location. So this is another important thing. I'm sure that letter will tell you what to do, but you don't want to mess up your credit because you think, oh, well, the bank's closed. I'm not going to pay my loans anymore. Don't do that. Continue to pay like normal. Okay, so you know that the credit union uses your money, but it is protected by the NCUA, and you'll get your money within five days if there is a collapse of that credit union. Now, this is a little bit scary, but I want to share with you a list of credit unions that have gone into what's called conservatorship, where the NCUA kind of takes over to try to correct some issues, or actual liquidation, where they, they do the thing where they shut the whole thing down and reimburse you. So this is uh, straight, again, from the NCUA website, and they kind of define the difference between conservatorship and liquidation here. Um, but there's a full list here. Let me zoom out so you can see them all. There's a full list of liquidations and conservatorships that have happened, and you can see <laughs> it's more than I would personally be comfortable with. So it's really good to look at what states are these happening in. So maybe these are local credit unions. Um, and click into these to kind of see what was going on. So I just looked at the most recent one on March 8th, 2023, Inter-American Federal Credit Union in Brooklyn, New York, went into involuntary liquidation, meaning they just took over, shut them down. They were not... Uh, uh, given another chance, you know, like conservatorship would go. So I clicked into it um, and let's just zoom in here so you can kind of see a little bit more. But basically there's the announcement here from the NCUA that says uh, Inter-American Federal Credit Union and they had to discontinue operations after determining the credit union was not operating a safe and sound manner. Um, and it says, of course, member deposits are federally insured up to $250,000. Uh, and the NCUA continues to tout they've never lost a penny of insured funds. So again, this should show you that your assets are protected. But I wanted to learn a little more. So I actually dove into like a local newspaper site. And here's what they <laughs> said about this credit union, very small credit union, less than a million dollars deposited into this credit union. But it says at the end of the first quarter in 2022, 21% of their loans were delinquent. And in 2017 to 2018, they had loan delinquency of 22%, 23%. So compared to the peer average of 3.5% delinquency, they were like 6x the national average. So their loans were all going delinquent. They, they were not going to get the money back that they put out. And so they were risking their customers' deposits. And so the NCUA stepped in and shut them down. So I will put a link to this below. Again, you can go through and just start looking at a full list of all of these liquidations and conservatorships um, dating way back here. Uh, I'm sure you could go all the way back um, as far as they have records here, but... This is just a kind of an eye-opening thing that on a day-to-day -day basis, there are uh, small financial institutions like this that do go under. The big ones, of course, are going to hit the news like Silicon Valley Bank, but you know, credit unions are also at risk. So again, it's good to know who are you banking with? Are they big enough? I would recommend being at a credit union that has a good amount of customers and assets. Uh, I'm personally with a credit union that spans across multiple states and has tens of billions of dollars or more uh, and are used by, I think, over a million people. So just make sure you do your research when you're putting your money into any banking institution. So I think the bottom line is to just realize that, that credit unions are not exempt from going out of business. Banks are not exempt from going out of business and that any financial institution that has risky practices could get shut down. But I don't want you to freak out. This video isn't to make you worry. In fact, I want it to reassure you that your deposits are protected and that there are processes in place that will make sure you get your money back quickly, typically within less than a week, and then you can just move on with your life. So yes, banks do use your money. They don't just let it sit there in a vault, but those funds are protected and this is a highly regulated uh, environment. So I would say that if your credit union does collapse, it's annoying, but is not life-changing or devastating. You're not going to lose your money unless you have more than the $250,000 deposit insurance limit. So if you do have that, I recommend you split up your money to make sure it's all insured.
All right, I hope this video was helpful and you feel a little more confident in how credit unions work and how credit union insurance works. Uh, but it might be a little more eye-opening too to see how they use your money. Maybe you didn't know that. So you should be aware of your credit union, its size, and realize that, you know, unfortunately, yes, they could collapse. But there is a great process in place to make sure your money gets back to you in a timely manner. So thanks again for watching. If you've ever been through a credit union liquidation or a bank liquidation, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, I would love to hear about how the process worked and if it worked out for you. And if you have any other questions about banking or if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because uh, I want to continue bringing you helpful information to give you financial freedom. All right. Thanks for joining. Peace.